In this video, we're gonna talk about some things that defenses have done to stop wide zone and the new techniques we can use to flip the tables back on the defense. So let's dive in. So we're gonna start with some things defenses are doing now that stops wide zone. Maybe you're not seeing this in your level of football. We are looking at NFL film right here. However, things do trickle down and eventually these techniques are gonna come down to our level. So we need to be prepared. So we're gonna talk about what defenses are doing and then get into the techniques we can use to counteract their attempts. So right here, we are running wide zone to the left and we are gonna take a look at this stack of players, uh, number 50, the linebacker, down to the one technique and see how they are fitting up the wide zone. The one technique is going to try and cross the face of the guard and then number 50 is gonna be playing the A gap right here. So let's take a look. So we have our combo right here of the center and the left guard that would be a single call they were taking the one back to the linebacker but because of how hayward here is playing the run where he's trying to cross over to the b gap the center can never get a hold of him so nobody gets to come off on the linebacker so with old wide zone rules right here it would say that the center right here needs to come off on the linebacker however because the guard is trying to cross his face from that backside position talking about the left guard here if the center leaves then hayward the defensive tackle can just fall right back and play this b gap so what does the center do he stays on but now we have nobody for the linebacker and he's going to go fit this run fill it and make the tackle in the hole all right, looking here, we're going to see that same idea where the two eye he's in now is going to be trying to cross from the A gap to the B gap. Then we're going to get the three backside shooting the gap. So one of the things that stops wide zone and always has is not being able to cut the front in half. We want to stretch the front side or widen the front side and wall off the back side so we have a running lane in between. But that doesn't work if we get a backside run through on the defensive end. So what's going to happen here is the center is going to leave. He's going to hammer and leave like we just talked about. But because we're getting that cross face action from the two eye, he's going to cut off the zone, force the running back to cut back. And then we don't get the reach on the back side. So that three technique is going to slow the running back up in the hole and be able to bring some reinforcements to the party. All right, here we get a look at kind of what I was talking about on the first play. We are looking at number 92 right here. The left guard leaves early, opens up all this space in the hole for a prepared defensive lineman to fall back into the hole and make the tackle. And this is Trent Williams right here, number 71. This is the best left tackle in football, has been for the last five years. So the left guard right here tries to shove the defensive end over into the C-gap, but because he's playing long, the defensive end is, He's got Trent Williams kind of in a bind right here, and he's able to spin and fall back into the run in the hole. So the three-step rule that we've all heard for the last five, six, seven years doesn't work anymore. The left guard does his job. He takes his three steps. He hammers and climbs. But now defenses that are playing these two-gap defensive linemen, where once the running back cuts up, we're falling back a gap. That is how defenses are stopping this. You're going to cut off the zone make the running back cut back and then we're going to fall back into the hole and this is not just a first level thing right here we should have the center and the right guard working back to number 41 we're running wide zone to the left and what we are going to get here is the running back's read his first read is this defensive end the first down lineman he's going to cut off the zone he's going to penetrate and get up field forcing the ball to cut back and then we're going to have the nose in the backside a gap he's not going to get caught off look we've got him playing this backside a gap and then by the time we get to our third step the center's climbing the zone has been cut off from the first defensive end the backside guard doesn't really get a hold of the nose so this ball's cutting all the way back and this linebacker is going to come make the tackle uh, with a couple of hats at the party but what happens with this center is the center supposed to be blocking him all right, but that's not where the ball's going. The ball's not getting behind the center because it has to cut back. So defenses are forcing the ball to cut back 
by having quick upfield penetrating action on the end and then playing those two gap defensive linemen on the inside even from shaded positions so the ball's cutting back the two gap defensive linemen are falling back into their gap the linebackers that we're comboing to with our post men are falling back as well because that play side lineman comes off but if i don't have to flow there because the zone has been cut off that linebacker is not getting blocked so we need to adjust our techniques to be able to account for this we've got a couple really good examples here against the vikings that are going to show this concept uh, into even greater detail so right here the three has cut off the zone this ball is bouncing back we're going to watch number 58 right here the middle linebacker all right if this is regular wide zone then we're supposed to cram it right but we can't because we have an unblocked player in the hole number 64 can only really block number 58 right here if he continues flowing all right but like i said this ball is going to cut back and because i don't have to flow anymore we're going to be in the hole all right so like I said, the ball cuts back. The linebacker doesn't have to flow. Now he can play downhill away from the leverage of the offensive lineman that climbs. All right, one more clip here before we get into our best practices, the things that I coach that we should be doing. Again, looking at number 58. So we can see the entire wall. Everything's getting forced back. The linebacker is able to fall back because he is playing away from the leverage of the offensive line. So really what's happening here is we're gonna have two for two on the edge, then they are solo from there. Then we should have a combo here with our center and backside guard. But again, because of how everything's working, they've built the wall, the zone gets cut off, and the center that is supposed to be accounting for number 58, if you draw it on paper, no longer has the angles to get to him when that zone gets cut off. 58 and that defensive lineman can fall back and make the tackle three yards from the goal line. So what should we do? How can we block it up from start to finish? So the way that I learned wide zone, we're gonna start with a solo block on the front side. He has no help. What are we doing? This is what I call a hook block. And to me, teaching the technique names is really important so that the players know exactly what we're talking about. So we are looking at the hook right here, the right tackle. This is what we have. We have arrows to the chest plate. Okay, we're gonna get our hands underneath as quick as possible. We're gonna play long. Okay, look at the length right here. We don't wanna get sucked in. We don't wanna get mired in. We wanna lead with our hands, not our helmet. We want one on each chest plate. If he lets us reach him, we can. If not, then we're just gonna keep widening them out. But this is the hook. Okay, we've got our first step. I still teach first step. We are stepping at the play side number of the defender. If he's head up on you or backside, then you just pick it up and put it back down. We can look at the right tackle's foot right here. He gets just a tiny bit of width, right? Three, four inches, but he's getting his weight moving in that direction. All right, leading with the hands. One to each chest plate. That right hand gets a little bit outside for me, but that's okay. Then we want to finish each block with a torque, especially uh, these hook blocks on the front side. So we're not getting outside. He's not gonna let us get outside. So you're gonna pull with the outside hand and push with the inside hand. And that is going to force the defensive lineman out of the hole, creating the running lane. Now we have other problems on this play, uh, but this specifically, this hook block by the right tackle is what we're looking at here. So now this defensive lineman has been completely rendered useless uh, if we had better blocking from the rest of the line, that would be a great hole to bounce inside of. Right here, looking at the right tackle again. Now number 53 is super wide, okay? In the last clip, he was down, maybe a little bit outside. He was close enough to where we have the potential. Maybe we can reach him, maybe we won't. If he's this far outside, and especially if his hand is up, we know we're not reaching him, okay? This is the force defender. If he's halfway good at his job, which I know is a lot different to say for an NFL film than for high school, but if he's halfway good at his job, we are not reaching him because he's the force defender. He is trying to force everything back inside. So what we do then, instead of trying to hook him, is we're just gonna match him out, okay? Just block him out. We know we're not getting outside of him, so we're just taking him and driving him out of the hole from there. Look at the length right here. Remember we talked about in the pass protection video 
one arm is longer than two the same thing applies in the run game right here okay one arm is longer than two just get him out of the hole we know that this thing is not getting outside the c gap we know it's getting in the b gap at best on the front side so just block him out match him out and we'll cut it up inside of there so the right tackle again is blocking number 53 here we have two keys as far as what technique he should use all right he's a little bit tighter so that means we can potentially think about hooking him his hand is down okay he's not standing up so we know that there's a possibility he's not the force defender but then we see number 38 right here outside of the tight wide receiver so we should have a pretty good indicator that he is the force defender and not number 53 so there is the chance that we could potentially get all the way outside of number 53 and create an outside running play so we are going to use a hook technique right here and i drew this combo up right here just to remind us that the right tackle is so low okay he knows he does not have any help right here from the right guard all right so again like i said he's tighter so we know there's a possibility that he might let us hook him defensive end jumps inside so we are going to take him where he wants to go okay he doesn't have help so if that defensive end pinches we're going to pin him in the running back should see that the first down lineman is pinned in okay so he should continue on this outside course and we'll see the hole that pops up okay if he stays outside there's no telling number 21 has to make this play with a 10 by 10 box to try and make him miss so just to make sure we're all on the same page as far as what a running back should be reading he's reading the first down lineman on the play side to the back so he's looking for the first block where an offensive lineman wins hat placement to the play side and that's where he's going to make his cut so he's looking for the first down lineman which right here is number 53 he's got his hand in the dirt you don't read stand-up defenders uh, like we see on this play right here number 53 would not be part of the read okay his hand is not down so we're not going to read him because we know that he's the force defender but here 53's hand is in the dirt so we can read him if we don't win hat placement here then the read goes to the next defensive lineman who has his hand down and then just continues all the way down the line just cutting back a gap at a time until you find that crease to get vertical with these techniques it does help to kind of create a little bit more fluidity a lot of times you hear wide zone people say you can only run it from the dot whether you're under center or whether you're pistol because the running back and the center have to be together and you don't get that if you're offset but these techniques that we're talking about kind of mitigate that a little bit and give you a little bit more room for error as far as the marriage of the running back in the center so this is going to help you if you want to run offset so you can run more zone read or rpos off of it uh, these techniques are going to help you there as well all right so let's get into the real magic of the play and that is going to be our combinations so we are still going to hook with the postman so we call the postman the guy who is uh, the play side guy in the combo and the scoop man is the back side guy and you are still going to hook the defender okay we're still going to take those arrows one to each chest plate but now we have the backside help and the uncovered guy that we're going to talk about is really uh, the difference maker in this play if you are covered then you have a hook if you are on the play side then you just have to know do you have help backside that you can pass him to or do you have to pin him in if he tries to pinch so right here we're looking at the left guard a hook with the combo okay so we see he's got his arrows his quick hands all right we are we're not winding up we are getting our hands straight to the defensive lineman remember the first touch wins 80 percent of the time on the line so we are controlling the defensive lineman controlling then we got our help we are staying on as long as possible so by the time we actually get to the linebacker how many steps have we taken right a lot more than three if we're looking at the old wide zone rules and contrasting that we cannot let the defensive lineman cut off the zone because we climbed and pierced early so old wide zone rules here would state that right about now 75 should be coming off but then we can get the zone cut off and number nine can fall right back here into the hole and make the play and that is what we do not want to happen we can fix that by staying on the defensive lineman as long as possible deliver him to the second level player and then now we cut off look he's still got a hand on the defensive lineman whenever he's engaging with the linebacker right here this is absolutely beautiful 
then we look at the result of the play a little hesitation finally getting north and south nice eight yard run all right right here we are looking at the left guard in the center working up to number 49 in the last play the defender they were working to was lined up to the play side so it was pretty obvious that the left guard was eventually going to come off but here they're stacked together so we don't entirely know what's going to happen is number 49 is going to scrape over from that backside position and when that happens we are going to execute a stuff so the stuff is when the postman is pushing the defensive lineman back to the scoop man and then you are going to go collect the linebacker so the post is stuffing that defensive lineman back scoop man has to be ready for it and then the postman can come off on the linebacker when it is time okay notice he's still got a hand on that defensive lineman all the way until we are making contact we are delivering the first level to the second not letting them cut off the zone and fall back all right so now we are looking at the uncovered lineman on the front side here they are working to the down safety number 14 and this is where we are going to execute the reach technique so reach is when we are going to take the backside arm to the play side shoulder and walk around the block so comparing this to a hook and why i think it's really important for players to know the names of these techniques because they're different the hook has hands on both sides of the chest plate a reach is only going to use one hand going to take that backside hand to the play side number then we're going to hold up the defensive lineman so we can walk around him that's what we're going to see right here we get a little bit of help from the defensive lineman as far as a pinch but look now number 55 the center he's taking his right arm to the play side number of the defensive lineman walking around the block and sealing that off to create a nice running lane for number 27. looking at the right guard right here uh, the reach is the goal okay ideally in the front side combo we can capture the edge but we know that's not always the case so what's going to happen right here is the linebacker scraping over all right but the uncovered offensive lineman this right guard right here he cannot secure the reach from the stuff of the right tackle so we can see the right tackle he's getting that scraping linebacker so he's trying to stuff him back but teller can't get a hold of him okay so what do you do this is the plow technique we're just taking that defensive lineman and we're going to drive him out okay the plow is stronger than the stuff so the the postman is trying to push that defensive lineman he's pushing 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 but the scoop man just can't get that backside arm across so what do you do stick it in his armpit and run him out and then now the ball is going to cut back all right again problems at other points of the play we are just looking at that combination. We can see right here, we are taking both of these defenders out. And this is the front side part of the play. Again, we don't get the back side cut off, but we can see the combo and the plow from there. So, so far we've talked about the reach and the plow as far as the uncovered offensive lineman goes. Remember, he's really the key that makes this work. If I'm uncovered and my target linebacker scrapes over, I'm trying to reach that defensive line, but if I can't get there, and I'm going to plow him and drive him out. Wyatt Teller again right here. We've talked about two things that the uncovered offensive lineman can do on the play side. First one, target linebacker scrapes over, and I can fully execute the reach on the defensive lineman. I get my backside hand across and walk around the block and create that hole. Or maybe I can't quite get a hold of him, so instead of reaching him, I'm going to plow and drive him out. But both of those entail the target linebacker scraping over. If he stays, we have to hammer and climb, but this is still different than the three-step timing. So right here, the right guard and right tackle, they're working number 57. 97 stays in the gap, so we are forcing him over a gap. That's the cue that I give my offensive lineman, is you are moving that defender over a gap, and then now it's on the postman to be able to drive him out while we come off on the linebacker. Comes off a little bit earlier than I would have liked right here, but we kind of get the idea i would have liked to stay on just a little bit then maybe come off right about now just to make sure that we really get the first level taken care of take care of the first level first but the right tackle does a really good job right here of torquing him out to make sure that we get a running lane right here but then the backside defensive end doesn't really honor the quarterback 
All right, so let's talk about the backside. We are also reaching on the backside and it is the same technique as an uncovered offensive lineman on the front side when the linebacker scrapes. So a reach is a reach. We're taking that backside arm across to the play side number and the center and right tackle both do it very well right here. So we'll look at the center first, take that right arm all the way across to number 98. We have won the advantage on the play side. Go back, take a look at number 78. Again, the, the play side arm is not even a factor. Okay, they, they are not doing anything with their left arms. Take that right arm across, walk around the block. Now we've got the edge. So a couple plays here where we kind of put it all together. We're running wide zone to the left right here. We have a tight end here. He is going to match out number eight. Okay, remember number eight, he's pretty wide. He does not have a hand in the dirt. We anticipate him being the force defender. So we're not even gonna try and hook him. We're not even gonna try and get the edge. Match him out and we're gonna cut the ball inside at some point. Left tackle doesn't really have anybody. He's got number 49. Number eight's wide and 49 is down a little bit. So uh, we're not really gonna combo anything. He's just kinda gonna make sure that we don't get any kind of pinch and twist. Gonna come up to number 49. Left guard is covered on the play side. So he has a hook. Gonna end up stuffing the defensive lineman back to the center. Center and right guard here are gonna reach. Right tackle's gonna check his gap and climb we're going to get a beautiful play gorgeous hole opened right for the running back look at the y right here okay first step open right to the play side number and i really don't coach steps after that we get our first step and then it's all about the hands the hands lead us to the block torquing out number eight right here forcing that running lane inside left tackle again just making sure we don't get pinched and then on the linebacker Left guard gets that lag step from the defensive lineman so we can see the length right here. Right hand stuffing him back to his scoot and then being prepared to build that wall separating the front side from the back side on number nine right there. And there is our hole. Again right here running to the open side. Left tackle matching out number 52 right here, Khalil Mack. Left guard is covered so he's got the hook. So center is not gonna get to the defensive lineman in time. So he's gonna end up plowing and driving him out. The right guard's gonna do what I call a Rico right here. We'll take a look at him first. We're just getting that right arm back and trying to get the backside caught up as much as possible. But our linebacker is flowing fast, trying to shoot that gap. So we've gotta get hands on him just to do our best to make sure we separate the front side and the back. And we can see that here, right tackle trying to reach that three. So again, the magic is really gonna happen between the left guard and the center right here. You can see number nine, not really sure. Okay, is he staying home? Is he scraping over? So we keep an eyes on him. The center does a really good job. You can see his eyes the whole time. Never leave number nine. 69's kind of try to stay in the gap. They're trying to make it as gray of a read as possible for both offensive linemen and hope that they are not on the same page as far as what needs to happen on the fly. But this is why it's really important that we take the first level to the second. Number nine decides late that he's gonna try and scrape over. We're just gonna plow number 69 out of there and create a running lane in what would be the A gap, the backside A gap, creating that play. So just to review uh, and see everything drawn up in a different mode, we're gonna jump on the whiteboard and just quickly review. So we've been working play side to backside. Right here, we're gonna look at covered to uncovered. All right, so starting with the right tackle, he is covered to the play side. He is going to have a hook. Now, he's not necessarily solo, uh, and this is one of the key points to me with a hook, is that you should know to expect whether to be solo or not, but zone is zone, and we need to block it up that way. We have the center, and then we have the backside guard is covered with the three. I wanna save the play side guard for last, we're gonna get a Rico right here on the backside three where the left guard is just gonna give that left hand and get up to the mic to make sure we can cut him off. Left tackle has to scoop out that three. Uh, this would be a read play for us, read that defensive end. So the magic right here is gonna be made by the right guard. So what the right guard is gonna do right here is he's going to shuffle deep. That's the technique that uh, we call it and he is locked on the wheel, eyes on the wheel the whole way. Ideally, he's gonna be able to leave a hand for the nose right here to make sure that we don't get cut off, but our eyes are not leaving the wheel. Should have a hand on the nose, 
if the wheel scrapes over, then we know that he's not falling back, so we don't have to worry about it. Then we get to, can I reach the defensive end or do we need to plow him out? Either way, we are taking the end to the wheel and the ball is going to cut back to some degree. If the wheel stays home in the B gap, we're gonna make sure we don't have any kind of pinch from the defensive end. And then the right guard is gonna take care of the wheel. But one thing that we didn't see on film that we need to do is let's say the wheel is falling backside. So the nose is trying to cut off the zone. Maybe we have a twist on, the nose is trying to cut off the zone and we get the wheel jumping backside into where hopefully the defense thinks the ball is gonna cut back. What we have to think here is that zone is zone. Okay, we are responsible for the gaps as they come. So if the wheel jumps backside, the right guard's gonna shuffle deep, then he has to also make the numbers right. So if he sees the wheel jump backside like he's trying to fall back for a cutback zone, then we need to take over the nose with the guard so the center can handle the wheel. And then now we have our hole on the front side and that is called a rewind. So if the target linebacker falls back, then we have to rewind on the backside defensive lineman. Now those are just our base techniques some things change whenever we get into two back runs as far as just our target linebackers but all we have to know is where is our target linebacker is he aligned backside then we have our normal rules if he's aligned play side then we generally have an idea that the postman's going to come off but our two back runs especially we have the fullback or the y they are des designated for a certain linebacker and the offensive line adjusts off of that. Nothing changes for the running back as far as his aiming points go. All that changes is who is responsible for who up front, specifically who are we isolating in the second and third levels. And if you want to know more technique that I teach my offensive linemen, then click on the screen to watch this next video.